<laughs> yeah, my name is Caitlin. Thanks, it used to be you Googled the name Caitlin, I come up pretty quick. I have been buried. I have been buried in Google search results in this last week. Uh, you all know that there is a new Caitlin in town. <laughs> Caitlin Jenner announced her name as Caitlin. Uh, I was very pleased and proud of her. That's great because I am also a Caitlin. I was asked for comment. <laughs> so I wrote a little ditty. Uh, that ditty wound up in the New York Times. <laughs> this is true, I didn't make it up. That'd be a weird thing to make up. Uh, that's a weird credit to just claim on a comedy stage. But it's true, it got printed uh, in the New York Times, which was very exciting. It was a little letter to Caitlyn Jenner, just welcoming her to the name, Caitlyn. Uh, if you didn't read it, uh, there's a few key things to know about being a Caitlyn. You share your name with a lot of people. Peak Caitlyn saturation was 1998. That means that there are a ton of shitty 17-year-old Caitlyns ruining everything. I was worried that maybe Caitlyn wouldn't be ready to share a name, that maybe she wouldn't be prepared to share a name with so many people, but I looked it up and peak Bruce saturation was right about 1949. So she's used to sharing a name. She's done it, she's ready. Uh, it's a good name, I like it a lot, and I was proud, you know, it's nice that somebody else chose it, so I wrote, at the bottom of the article, like, hey, you know, Caitlin, if you ever want to talk, Caitlin to Caitlin, I'm always available to help out another Caitlin, especially one that just changed the world. Uh, I went to bed the night before the article was supposed to come out. When I say went to bed, I mean I passed out at about 7 in the morning. Uh, and then I, my eyes peeled open to a shaking phone at 9 in the morning. The article had come out. I was getting a stream of emails. I opened one up, I, was, I saw a link to my article, I opened it, there's my name next to that font, everything felt very cool, and then while I'm reading the article, uh, my phone rings, and I answer it, and on the other end, is fucking Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> she called me within 20 minutes of that shit hitting the internet. Caitlyn is Googling herself hard. She means it. I already told you I was hung over. I had slept two hours. I picked up the phone. We sounded exactly the same. <laughs> that is the cheapest joke I will make at Caitlyn Jenner's expense. She was very, very nice. She explained that she was actually in San Francisco. That's where she was calling me from. She was up there with her reality show. They were filming a bunch of stuff at the Human Rights Campaign. Uh, she had just met trans people for the first time. I guess she had never known a trans person. I was like, you've never known a poor person. It's different. It's not the same. <laughs> but she, she was talking about it. She's like, I... You know, I met with all these people, you know, all these beautiful people and their stories. Their stories are so sad. It's like, oh God, did no one tell you? <laughs> yeah, this shit is sad. It's all sad. Oh, don't watch any of the movies. None of them. The movies, they're all boys totally cry. All of them. At the end of Boys Don't Cry. Don't watch it. Don't. <laughs> Uh, it was a surreal conversation, perhaps the most surreal piece of information that I acquired in a 15-minute phone call with Caitlyn Jenner was that Caitlyn Jenner is really good friends with uh, uh, famous comedian and puppeteer Jeff Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anything funnier my fucking DJ Jenner wants that dinner party like now. Like, what does Ahmed the Dead Terrorist have to say about this transition? What is Peanut gonna do? I guess we have to wait for his next special to find out. Uh, it was a very weird conversation, but it felt very cool to connect with Caitlyn Jenner, Caitlyn, Caitlyn. And also just, it was neat to talk to somebody who had like, you know, so she's done a cool thing late in life, living on herself, that's awesome. And I, I realized that, you know, part of the reason this felt so big is that I wasn't always so good at being a Caitlyn. Uh, when I grew up, as a little kid, I was definitely more of a Bruce. Way more of a Bruce, for sure. Caitlin Gill was a tomboy. Oh, oh my, yes. How much of a tomboy was I? I'm glad you asked. Caitlin Gill showed up to third grade picture day in a button-up and a bolo tie. That's a lot <laughs> that I thought a nine-year-old girl child should wear. Uh, also in that picture, it's on the internet, you can find it. I have a full-on mullet, 100% hockey hair. I have a mullet. What it happened was I had a fight with my dad. I wanted short hair. He wanted to have me to have long hair, and then we both lost that fight, is what happened. <laughs> and I had a mullet. Here's how bad I wanted to be a boy when I was a little kid. I wanted to be a boy so bad! And all I knew is the boys got to use a special room to pee in because they had equipment that had a funnel piece and I just had a I just had an open flow. I just had a, so I thought if I can fix that, 
I'm going to get paid a dollar for, you know, every dollar I work and I'll get the cool toys. That's what I thought. Uh, but I didn't know how to do it. I had no idea about transitioning. I was a child. So I looked around at the resources that I had available to me in my own home bathroom and my eyes fell upon that empty core of a toilet paper roll. Remember? <laughs> absolutely true. I decided that that would be my ticket. Uh, and before school one day, I just packed it in. I just packed a little heat. I just had, I can't imagine what my poor teacher's little girl, little girl in camo cargo shorts was just a rod. Just a hot rod. And I gave it a test drive. I thought I'll give it a whirl. I'll use the ladies room just to see if this works. So I positioned myself in a little stall and I was all ready to go. And I, I just didn't know, in my innocent childhood mind, I assumed that cardboard was a lot more resilient than it actually was. <laughs> and as soon as my, my pee started, my penis became useless. It was just nothing. I had a dick that does exactly the opposite of what you want. It was hard all the time, and then instantly soft as soon as you needed it. Just, <laughs> all it just turned into wet mush. I had to flush it away. <laughs> Took a long time for me to grow into myself. The ugly duckling has become the swan. Yes, this is swan. I'm fucking done. This is it. Uh, I know what I am. I know. I know that I am a beautiful woman. I know that. I know that I am a beautiful woman. I know that. Your silence does not intimidate me. I know. I know that I am a beautiful woman. I, I have seen the proof of my own beauty. I have seen the scientific evidence of my own beauty. I have seen them. I have seen the boners. <laughs> those are mine. I made them. <laughs> so it came as a bit of a surprise to me when something happened recently that has not happened since my childhood. Uh, very recently, I was asked if I was a boy or a girl. That came up. Uh, girl, in case you were wondering, it's girl. Uh, you should already know it was a child that asked me. It was a child that asked. An adult doesn't ask you that question to your face. Uh, no, it was a kid that asked. Uh, adults are assholes, kids are monsters, it's different. She was very direct. It was a little girl and she looked me up and down. She's like, are you? Are you a boy? Or a girl. <laughs> it felt big. It felt like a big moment for me because you have to you have to be honest with children. You can't lie to a child. I had to be honest with that little girl. I looked right at her and I said, "Oh, honey, gender is a wholly invented construct that doesn't <laughs> fully encompass the human experience, even though my biology." happens to align with my identity, you might find that asking someone to choose between two points on a binary is both limiting and dangerous. Because <laughs> in this case, if you're asking someone to choose between boy or girl, you're asking someone to choose between predator or prey. And if you answer girl, you're answering prey. And what will start to happen is you'll start to feel the crushing pressure from above of the invisible barrier that will forever prevent you from attaining your hopes and your dreams. And it will just push you farther and farther down until one day you're just lying in the fetal position in your shower reading the best of shampoo bottles and realizing that even though the ingredient list is the same, his I'm sorry, honey, I meant to say girl. I'm a girl. Why are you crying? Did I scare you? Good. 